Yeah, it's always an honor to be invited to, to share with you who are here and also with those of you who are watching from your campers, from your decks, from your beds, with your TV trays and your breakfast and your coffee. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, feel free to message me. Um, on Facebook, you can private message me. You can message Family Worship Center on Facebook. That'll get to me. And if you prefer to email, you can email Pastor Dallas at dallas at whitecourt.church, and he will forward that on to me as well. Because if you have a question, chances are other people also have a question. And so we want to be able to answer those either privately or we'll make a short video. I want to begin this morning with a story of when God really disappointed me. I met Jesus at the age of 16. I left home and man, I was committed. I loved God. And he had changed my life fairly dramatically. I had instantly kicked a lot of habits. And one of them was smoking. I had a pack and a half, two pack a day habit. Don't ask how I supported that at the age of 16 without a job. But, you know, it was one of those things the morning after I received Christ, I went and lit up a smoke and I was like, oh, I don't need this. So I tossed them and my friends took great glee in breaking them all up. But about two weeks later, I was living in small town Saskatchewan and I wanted to smoke so bad. I'm telling you, so bad. So, you know, I thought to myself, what am I going to do about this? And I thought, ding, ding, light bulb went on. I know what I'm going to do. I am going to go to the church, and the guy who works there will pray for me. Right? It's logical. So I went hustling over to the church. Now, you've got to remember, I was raised in the Catholic Church. And in the Catholic Church at that time, I'm not sure if it's still the same, the churches were open 24-7, and the priest there, like, that is his life. He is there to serve. And um, not like pastors who actually have lives and families and other things that go on. So I, I knew that the, the church would be open and that pastor priest guy there, he was going to pray for me, man. So I went hustling over to the church and I get there and it was the middle of the day and I rattle on the door and it is locked. And I was like, oh, what am I going to do? So next logical thing, we'll go around and we'll check all the doors because maybe he just, you know, sleeps at the church and forgot to unlock the front door that morning. So, you know, I'm, I'm checking the doors, even that one that goes to the basement, you know, the big double, <laughs> the double cellar door kind of thing. Um, I'm checking the windows. I'm looking, I'm like, hello, is anybody there? And at this point, you know, if this pastor priest guy is there, he's probably hiding under his desk somewhere, wondering who this freak is banging on all the windows and the doors. And I, I was just like, I was devastated because nobody answered and God had so let me down. He was not available. What am I going to do now? So, you know, I sat on the curb and, you know, I, I, just, I was just starting to vibrate because I wanted that cigarette so bad. So I finally sucked it up. I went to the store, went to the mall. I bought a pack of smokes. I lit it up right in the store because you could do that then. And then I was like, oh, I can't believe I did that. I blew it. And I, you know, broke them all up and threw them in the garbage. And, you know, I just, I just felt so terrible. So, you know, later that day, um, the youth, some of the young adults that I hung out with at that time who had jobs, um, one of them was Steve, who is now my husband. I was hanging out with them, and I talked to him later, and I was like, Steve, I, I, I really wanted to smoke, and I went to the church to get prayed for, and, and all the doors were locked, and all the windows were locked, and for all I know, they were calling the police because I was banging on all the doors, and I finally went to the store, and I bought a cigarette, and I lit it up, and then I felt really bad, and now I'm probably going to hell. And I was a, a little bit emotional, as you probably picked up on that. So Steve, the calm and collected man that he is, when I go through my slightly psychotic emotional outbursts, he does what he always does when I'm overwhelmed. And he took my hand and he says, you're not going to hell. And I can pray for you. And I was like, what? You can? Like I thought only that pastor priest guy could. You know, see, I hadn't learned at that time that I could pray for myself. And that I could even call a friend to pray for me. But most of all, I hadn't learned at that time that I had the power to act on my own behalf. 
and to talk to the Almighty God Jesus, who calls himself not only our Savior and Lord, but also our friend. So you're probably wondering why the Wonder Twins logo. Well, the word that came to my mind when I was getting ready for this was activate. And I know I'm probably dating myself, but I checked with my 19-year-old daughter and she said she even knew who the Wonder Twins were. So it's still a thing, or else she's just been influenced by my 80s upbringing. I would get up every Saturday morning as a little girl, wait for the TV to turn on, because it went off at like midnight, and you know, you had the bars. And then, you know, when it did come on, the national anthem would play, and my sister and I would stand up, and we would sing the national anthem. And then we would watch our Saturday morning cartoons, one of which was the Wonder Twins. And you know, when the Wonder Twins got in a jam, I can't remember if they had special rings, or if, but they like put their fists together, and they were like, Wonder Twin powers, activate. And I thought she was really cool because she could turn into any kind of a mammal. And he was less cool because he could turn into any kind of water in vapor, ice, liquid form, and that was kind of lame. But she was super cool. And so, you know, in, it kind of fixed in, my, fixes in my mind the concept of activating that power that God gives us. To activate something that will help you when you struggle, to activate something that will change your life, that will change your attitude, and that will give you life when everything around you is crumbling apart. So I'm going to start this morning with reading a prayer. It's written by a guy named Paul, who started out as a killer of Christians. He met Jesus in a really dramatic way. He shared his faith in Jesus all over the place, outside of his own country. He started churches, he taught people to follow God, and he wrote lots of letters to the church. So I want to read part of a letter here today that he wrote to the church in Ephesus. So this is from his letter to the Ephesians. And it says, For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people. I think there's, a, is there a next one? There we go. To grasp how wide, how long, and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power, that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. The power I want to talk about today is faith. See, I had faith. I had a lot of faith. When you ask Jesus into your heart, the only way you can do that is through faith. And I had big faith, but it was kind of in a mini stage. And I really didn't know what to do with it or how to use it or how to be empowered by it. What is faith? Faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. The testimony of faith is what previous generations were commended for. So faith is having confidence in what we're hoping for, in insurance and what we are not seeing yet. Does that make sense? It might not. It might require faith. <laughs> This passage in Hebrews goes on to list many men and many women and the things that they achieved through faith. And I believe that over the centuries, many others can be added to that list. And I don't think it's impossible seeming that you can be added to that list as well. That you can be added to the list, that I can be added to that list. And so I want to share a little bit about what we can do to better activate the power of faith in our lives. Um, in order to access that power to be strengthened so we can better understand the love of God. 
So we can see how deep, how wide, how long, how it's beyond anything that we can understand. His love working through us and in us. So we can have that inner life of love, of joy, of peace, and that outer life of love toward others, and sharing his love with others, which is really the purpose that God has called us to, so that we can be confident in that purpose, according to the mission Jesus has given us, to make disciples of others, just to share the love that he has for them. And I don't know about you, I need that kind of power in my life. The disciples said to Jesus, increase our faith. And in order for faith to grow and to mature, it needs to be continually activated. So Lord, increase our faith. Increase my faith today. And the increase of faith, man, it doesn't just happen. Okay, it's like, it's like a house. It requires certain tools. And, you know, you, you do things and you... you use these tools to build the house from the foundation up and these tools that are required to establish it. And so I'm going to just provide for you three simple tools that I'm sure you know about and they will help us all to activate the power of faith in our lives. The first thing, the first tool is to activate the TTG option. Talk to God. Often we call this prayer. See, God works by faith. He works by my faith. He can work through other people's faith too, for sure. But he really wants to grow our faith. And that comes from our own relationship with him. He wants to talk to you. He wants you to talk to him. He wants to talk to you. And you don't have to have a special way of doing it. You don't have to talk in a certain way. You don't have to talk in a certain style. You know, we just finished singing some prayers to God. It can look like that. It can be something that you just say. It can be something that you write down or something that you read to him, whatever. There's no right way, there's no wrong way to do it. The main thing is God wants to hear from you. And there is definitely a place, for sure, for having others pray for you, and I am going to talk about that as we go along, but that cannot be our default setting. You shouldn't be able to only pray when you're with others. You shouldn't be able to only worship when you're here in the building or in your small group. You know, Pastor Johan reminded us last week, because of Christ and our faith in him, we can now come with confidence and boldness into God's presence. So talk to God. Type it. Say it. Write it. However it works best for you. And that is an option that I really could have exercised instead of banging on all these doors trying to get into a building that nobody was in. And I'm sure that Pastor Priest guy would have done a really great job of praying for me. But I didn't need him. I couldn't only talk to God through someone else. You know, sometimes sitting in silence with God can also be very powerful. It's uncomfortable because it's quiet and we're used to making, you know, noise. We're used to hearing noise. But they can be really powerful moments where God chooses to stir stuff up inside of us. And like I say, that can be really uncomfortable. But I encourage you not just to talk to God, but to also sit in silence before him. The second tool I want to tell you about is to activate your Bible app. You know, faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by the Word of God. In the Passion Translation, it says, Faith, then, is birthed in a heart that responds to God's anointed utterance of the Anointed One. See, 2,000 years ago, listening was the only way to get the Word of God. Right? Because God's word was read to the churches through letters and through different things. Today we have a lot of different options. We have our Bibles, the hard copy that I don't have with me today because I use my Bible app. And I know lots of you guys do too. You know, we can read it for ourselves, we can listen, we can study. We have live streams to hear. We can take notes. We can go back and review it because we have that capability today to watch it again. We can 
watch sermons on YouTube, although you may want to be a little bit discerning about what you choose to listen to. You can read books. We can read books by people who have studied and get their input as well. Read your Bible so that in these moments that are challenging you, where you're struggling, where you're feeling tempted, you can remember what God says about you, what he has done for you, and what he is doing in you. Remember, when you read your Bible, you will find out what God says about you, what he has done for you, and what he is doing in you. See, the thing here is that I had read my Bible. I know I said I'd only been a Christian for two weeks, but man, I like devoured that thing. I took a 24-hour period and just read the whole thing. And I had taken note of some key phrases in there. One of them was from the letter Paul wrote to the Corinthians. And it said, No temptation has overtaken you except that which is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But with that temptation, he will provide a way out so that you can endure it. And I just lost my place. Sorry, guys. See, so this is a verse that I had read and that I had even memorized without anybody telling me to. And because of this, I was convinced that the way out of my temptation was to get this pastor priest guy to pray for me. See, I didn't know, like I said, enough about my Bible to know that I could talk to God myself, that I could bring myself boldly into his presence and have that conversation about why I was feeling so tempted and so challenged in that moment. See, another way to engage with God's word is through small groups where we can get together, where we can gather, where we can study together, where we can talk about, okay, what does this stuff that was written 2,000 years ago, like, how, what does that even mean today? Is it even relevant? And you know, the other day I was imagining if Paul was to write a letter to the Church of White Court, what might that look like? So it might, this is just completely me here, disclaimer, but it might look something like this. Dear Church of White Court, I send greetings from the warmer climates of our country. I will not be coming to visit this year. I have experienced shipwrecks and many near-death experiences and have no desire to be submerged in your unusually rainy climate. <laughs> he might say something like he told Timothy. However, I did want to write to you to remind you not to engage in useless debates and foolish quarrels and conspiracies that distract from the mission that Jesus has called us to to restrain from the anger and the suspicion that pervades our culture today. He might say something like he said to the Philippians, I want you to understand what really matters so that you can live pure and blameless lives until Christ's return. Jesus, who gave up his majesty, his divine privileges to be rescued. He had the right to be rescued by angels on the cross, and he chose to give up those rights that were justly his, and I ask you to follow Christ's example. He might say something like, I will not tell you to wear a mask or not to wear a mask, <laughs> but I do call you to walk in love toward others. He might mention what he wrote to the Corinthian church, love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice, but instead rejoices in the truth whenever it wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, endures through every circumstance, even in pandemics where the church should shine as a beacon of hope and kindness in a currently angry world. Those are just some of my own thoughts of what a letter to White Court might look like today. The Bible is relevant. It's worth reading. And if we can activate its power through faith, we can use it to develop faith and love in our lives toward others. Use it. You can even pray it. You know, for example, um, you know, if you've never 
thought about how you can use the Bible in a prayer. It's just like, Lord, I pray that you help us to develop love toward others during this pandemic. Help me to walk in love that is not jealous or angry or demanding my own way. Show me how to let your love shine before others so that they might see you. You know, that's just one example. And then number three, activate your phone a friend option. I read a quote and it called friendship the faithfulness of God in flesh through friendship. And I just love that. The faithfulness of God through flesh in friendship. I'm currently taking a course on um, mental health, understanding mental health. And it, it made this, the comment that when you are really struggling and when you are really challenged, excuse me, when you want hope, it's possible for other people to hope on your behalf. And I love that. See, in my situation, back in dating myself, 1989, there were no cell phones or Facebooks. We did have cars, we did have running water, but there was no private messaging. I felt very alone. And I am really grateful for technology that we can use to connect with others nowadays. I am grateful for technology that allows you online to gather with us as the church today because this building is not the church. The people here are the church, you are the church, I am the church, so I love that we can do this. And see, I didn't need that pastor priest guy to pray for me and like I say, I'm sure he would have done a great job, but we are the family of God. One person is not the God rep. When we struggle to do for ourselves, we do for one another. One of the most powerful moments in my life is when I had made a date with my daughter to go to Edmonton several years ago to, to have a day, a girl's day with her. And it's not something that we did very often. And that Saturday morning, I woke up and man, I had a whopping migraine. I don't know if any of you have had migraines, but they're bad. And I was in so much pain. I was in my bedroom with the lights off. I was throwing up repeatedly in the bathroom. And I was laying in bed and crying because it just hurt so bad. And I thought, I am gonna phone a friend. Uh, maybe I'll just text my friend because you know, I, I didn't really feel like talking to anybody. So I pulled up my, tel my cell phone, I had the lights on it down as low as it would possibly go and it was still like headlights with knives stabbing in my eyes. And I basically typed in probably badly misspelled, migraine, help, pray. And the lady that I messaged wasn't, she was a friend, but not someone I spent a lot of time with. So I'm not even sure why I picked her. It's the first time I'd ever done that. And instantly I got back a message, it was fairly long, that prayed for healing, that prayed and contained the words of the Bible in it. And I mean, it was very cool, it was very hard to read at the time, because like I said, knives stabbing in my eyes. But are you seeing the connection here between these three things? Activating talking to God, activating using his word, activating calling a friend or talking to a friend, texting a friend. And let me tell you how powerful this moment was because in an hour, my daughter and I were in the car driving to Edmonton. I mean, it was so awesome. Text prayers can be really powerful. They can be really meaningful. It takes courage to send them. And it takes courage sometimes to ask for those prayers. But man, they don't have to be long. And it's in a form that can be read and reread. And, and that the, the prayer and the word of God is like reminded over and over into us. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be well written but you can really be the voice of God to others. And, you know, when it comes to hearing God's voice, I am not an expert. And some of you have heard this story, but, you know, some years ago, I, I was still on staff here, and it was during the Afghan war, 
and my son was on tour in Afghanistan. And I was driving down the street from a friend's house and there was a sign outside of one of the houses hanging from their balcony railing. And it said, you know, so many days, there was a number until so-and-so returns home. And you know, it was the kind of thing that they could replace the number every day. And as I drove by that house, I just felt like, you should go knock on the door and offer to pray for their son. And I was like, because I'm very pastoral, I said, that's stupid. <laughs> Down the street. <laughs> And, you know, you start feeling like, oh, you know, should I be doing this? Should I, should I, and I went around the block. And as I slowed, I'm like, there's no parking spot. This must not be God. <laughs> Down the street we go, back around the block. So finally, I found a parking spot. I trudged through the snow to their front door and knocked on the door and had a really neat encounter with somebody who actually was also a believer and promised to pray for my son every day as well. So, I mean, it was just such a cool encounter. And I know Pastor Johan, I realized recently, also spoke on hearing God's voice. For me, the way that I can know if it's God is, this is really spiritual. Number one, if it's so ridiculous that I would never think of doing it myself. Number two, if it's not gonna hurt anybody, at the worst, it will embarrass me. And three, if it doesn't agree with anything God says. And seriously, you only get better at listening by doing it. So in closing today, I'm gonna have each one of you pull out your cell phones. So like, pull it out of your pocket or your purse. I know you have it with you. If you're at home, I realize you might be watching on your cell phone. So I don't know if you want to switch over to another device. I'll leave that up to you. But if able, pull up a device that you can use for messaging. Take a moment and close your eyes. And I want you to think of someone today that you would like to connect with. Someone that you may want to encourage. Someone you haven't connected with for a while. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to do anything really super freaky. This is going to be really simple. But I do want you to bring that person up on your phone. And I'm going to do this with you. So bring that person up on your phone. If you're online, go ahead and do that as well. Now... I want you to send them a message. And it can just be, hey, I was thinking of you, and send them a little prayer. And if sending a prayer is foreign to you, if that's not something that you've ever done before, you know, I hear people say, I'm sending good thoughts to you, or I'm sending positive thoughts to you. You know, just text those positive thoughts to somebody. You know, I, I'm thinking of you today, and I wish you the best of health. Or I'm praying for you to be healthy, or for your kids in the upcoming craziness of school year. So go ahead. I'm going to do this with you. So take a moment and send that. Got it? Was that too fast? And then hit send. Maybe some of you will get messages. That would be awesome. But like I say, sending a message to somebody, being God's voice to them is very powerful. And it doesn't have to be fancy. It can be super simple. God bless you. Easy, right? I know some of you are still doing this. Are y'all good? This wasn't too freaky or weird. God, I just pray over all of these messages that just went out. 
these prayers, these well wishes that people have courageously sent to others. Lord, I pray that your love would be evident through them. And Lord, I thank you for each person that is present, for each person that is online that has sent these messages. Lord, let it be an expression of your love to the receiver. And Lord, I realize that the stuff said today was pretty basic, pretty simple. But man, I need these reminders of how faith can be worked out in my life, how it can be activated so I can have your power to share your love with others so that I can have the courage to be your voice to others and the courage to ask for others to be your voice to me. And Lord, I pray that, that, that as we think about this, as we review, as we read, as we listen to you, that you would give each one the courage to do this and to be this. I am so grateful for your son that died so that we could, through faith, invite him into our lives. So Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith today as we lay down that foundation, as we use the tools that you have given us to build a pretty amazing house to fulfill your purpose of making disciples of our friends and of our families and in our communities. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, everyone.